honestly, when you have a view like this out of your hotel room window, why would you ever want to leave? Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. How are y'all doing out there? I'm doing pretty well, I have to say. I feel uh, rejuvenated, recharged, for the most part, from a whirlwind vacation uh, that I had. I mean, technically speaking, I still have a couple days left of my actual vacation before I have to go back to work. But yes, we had a delightful four-and-a-half-day visit from my very close friends, my little brother, Noah, and my little sister-in-law, Alyssa came out here from Oklahoma to spend a few days, uh, and they they were so nice to do this. They've got some stuff going on, just some uh, not really tra traumatic stuff, just kind of life stuff, uh, and they decided in the midst of it they would still take the time to come out and pay us a visit. Uh, that's one reason why it was so as short as it was, was because they've got stuff going on. And so, bless their pee-picking hearts, they still... Uh, made the time and effort and expense to come out and visit us because uh, Noah has wanted to do it for a long, long time. And so has Alyssa with her um, uh, veterinary medicine studies uh, focusing on marine biology. If you're going to study marine biology, the Oregon coast is one of the premier uh, spots to get some, some field work in, some uh, first-hand knowledge. So yes, uh, I'll tell you all about uh, what we saw and did uh, coming up in just a minute here. But uh, Yes, um, there's going to be quite a few videos coming your way, because uh, with me and Noah being me and Noah, uh, we did plenty of uh, record store shopping, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, we focused on CDs because uh, mainly because he was not too keen on the idea of having to package up records for a flight, you know, for, for airline travel, or having to bother to mail stuff back home, but then that became a moot point. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just let that be what it, what it is. Um, so yeah, we focused on CDs, but and uh, I will uh, give you a, at least two, actually three, haul videos coming up. Yes, there are going to be three of them. They're going to be, I'm not going to make them very long, because if I'm going to give you a whole series of videos, I'm going to try to make them a little more compact, a little more bite-sized chunks for you. But yes, Noah and I filmed a couple of haul videos, as well as just a, a kind of an unrelated video, because we were both in the same place. I wanted to film a video for uh, National Best Friends Day. This will be dropping on June 8th, which is National Best Friends Day, so that'll probably drop in the middle of this series of uh, Noah and Alyssa vacation videos. Uh, so yes, I, I was going to do uh, my whole final haul video wrapped up in with this vacation uh, recap, but I decided it was going to be too long of a video, so splitting up, up into two parts. I'm going to do part of my haul in this video. The rest of it will be its own video. Uh, yes, I tried to uh, up my vlog game uh, with this trip. I took a bunch of uh, videos and still pictures of our goings-on, what we saw and did over the course of uh, their visit here. So my plan is to intersperse clips of that stuff, little montages, in between the, um, the narrative that I'm doing here and now. So uh, Hope you sit back and enjoy and uh, have a great time with this. So yes, Noah and Alyssa flew in to Portland on Saturday morning. Uh, we drove up there, picked them up, and brought them back down to Eugene, the Eugene area. Uh, Sunday, we basically just poked around the Eugene area. I sh took them on a little walking tour of the University of Oregon campus. That's a fairly big attraction in Eugene. Uh, and we also went to the Museum of Natural and Cultural History, which is right along the, uh, right, just adjacent to the U of O campus. It's a great museum. I was there years and years ago, probably 15 or 20 years ago, so I, my memory of it was very foggy. So, uh, it was lots of fun to visit that museum again. I enjoyed it a lot more than, I, I, I wasn't into museums back in the day. I'm not exactly yay museums now, but, uh, I'm more appreciative now of the their educational capacity and uh, just the stuff that you learn in general with uh, museums. And uh, one of the fun things about the museums in the Pacific Northwest, I know that it may be this way in other parts of the country as well, is they all try to put some kind of an emphasis or uh, you know some kind of a perspective from the Native American viewpoint. So, and that was a theme within pretty much every museum and attraction we visited while they were here. 
And an another recurring theme is stuff that I either have not done in years and years or have never done, despite having lived in Oregon for almost three decades. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that I will, uh, will reveal itself as we go on. But yes, after the Museum of Natural and Cultural History, uh, we went and had lunch at a little, uh, another uh, adjacent to campus in the opposite corner, a little uh, lunch hangout that uh, a lot of uh, the university community frequents as well. Uh, it's called Rennie's, some great food there. And then, of course, uh, with as I said, with me and Noah being me and Noah, we had to start hitting up the record stores. Uh, we went to House of Records and Epic Seconds, both here in Eugene, the, the record stores that I talk about all the time in my videos. And we had time for not just one, but two of the St. Vinny's thrift stores. And uh, I gotta say, Alyssa, Noah's wife, is endlessly patient with him. He picked a heck, one heck of a, uh, a catch with uh, uh, holding on to Alyssa because she has boundless patience with him and his uh, tendency to want to browse forever in record stores. Uh, she was very, very patient. Uh, love you, Alyssa. That's just one of the many reasons we, we all love you. Uh, and, uh, but she did have stuff to look at in the St. Vinny's thrift stores. They all have a pretty darn good book section. She loves books, so she went and browsed the books while Noah and I browsed the CDs. So yes, a great time had all around, but as I mentioned, our Eugene haul will be in a one video. That'll probably be the next video, depending on... I plan on doing putting the videos out every other day, so I'm probably not going to do them consecutive days. So depending on when June 8th falls in my release schedule, uh, the, Portland, the uh, Eugene haul will be our next video. Uh, so after uh, that was Sunday, on Monday we went out to the Oregon coast, and uh, it's uh, some place that uh, we haven't been during my the first couple of decades of when we lived, we moved to, to Oregon. We made it out to the coast at least every other year. Uh, it's been two or three years since we've been out to the coast, my family and I, so it was lots of fun to head out there, and uh, the first thing we visited was the Sea Lion Caves, just north of Florence, Oregon. That is a great attraction, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, natural sea cave in the world, or at least I think it's the biggest in the States, anyway. Uh, but yes, lots of fun. It is basically a an open-to-nature um, uh, exhibit, if you can call it that. Uh, well, it, it's got a, a vantage point carved into the rock, is, is as much of an exhibit as it is. But yes, it's where sea lions like to hang out. Uh, at the time we were there, they weren't hanging out very much in the cave itself. Uh, we only spotted one or two in there. But uh, as for the rest of them, they were out on what's called the rookery, which is basically uh, a rock on, on the open sea, just out, you know, uh, the sun shining on them. They were out there sunning themselves, and, uh, you know, the circle of life, Hakuna Matata, whatever you call it, they were looking for mates, and uh, they were they were uh, roaring up a storm. You could hear them. We must have been 150 feet up above the rookery rocks, but uh, you could hear them loud and clear. Uh, of course, you know, there's nothing else to make noise out there, uh, except maybe the wind. And by the way, I'm glad that I brought my sweater that day, because uh, despite it being sunny, the wind was cold and it was fairly strong. So, uh, yes, but uh, you will enjoy, as I uh, will, if not right at this minute as I'm narrating, you will see in a moment uh, some of the footage I shot. As, and beautiful, spectacular views of everything else on the Oregon coast, not just the sea lions. Uh, yes, I tried to get as much of... Uh, uh, great footage as I could, and so yeah, that was that was lots of fun. Uh, they may have added to the sea lion caves the last time since the last time I was there, which was again it was like twenty years ago the last time I was there, and I think the last time I was there might have been my sister might have been with us. So uh, another uh, reason to uh, to have headed back there after being gone from there for so long, and after that we went and had some lunch up in Newport, which is the largest city on the Oregon coast. That's about an hour north of Florence. And yes, nice little uh, little diner place there where we had lunch. And uh, after that, we went to the Oregon Coast Aquarium, which, and that place I have never been to before. Uh, I've never been there until now. And that was lots of fun. I really, really enjoyed that. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, this was probably Alyssa's favorite day of the entire trip. Uh, as they both uh, have told me, any trip having to do, any, you know, any attractions having to do with animals, they are totally on board with. So uh, I was happy to... Uh, let that stuff dominate 
their visit out here because the visit was all about them. So, and make, making sure they had as much fun as they could have. But yes, the Oregon Coast Aquarium, lots of fun, a great place to, to visit if you've never been there. Even if you have a slight interest in uh, marine life or uh, animals in general, I recommend both the Sea Lion Caves and the Oregon Coast Aquarium. Uh, one of the best features of the Oregon Coast Aquarium, uh, well, we actually got there uh, right uh, on time. We uh, paid our admission and went in through the gates just in time for, uh, I guess they do this two or three times a day, a little otter presentation. They, they come into the otter exhibit to feed the otters. And of course, to give us a little presentation, telling us inter interesting facts about the otters and stuff. So that was a lot of fun, and it was perfectly timed with our entry to the aquarium. But uh, probably the neatest feature of the aquarium is they have a series of tunnels. It's two or three tunnels. Again, as I said, the Coast Aquarium is fantastic. You've got to see it. Um, if you're anywhere near the Oregon coast, which includes if you're in Portland or Eugene, you're close enough. It's only about an hour out to the coast. Uh, just it's, it's worth a visit, definitely. And then, uh, so that was uh, Monday. Uh, we decided we had to come back uh, fairly... We tried to get back as early as we could because we had a uh, uh, kind of an early rise the next morning, Tuesday morning, because we wanted to get to Portland in time to enjoy as much of the day as possible. But yes, excuse me. Uh, yes, Tuesday, we headed up to Portland to spend a couple of days, and that was uh, Noah and Alyssa's um, final destination before uh, heading home. And yes, uh, on Tuesday, when we got there and got settled in, we went to the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, and again, a place that I have never been to before, uh, before now. Lots of fun, and as luck would have it, their primary featured exhibit was on orcas, killer whales. So that was right up Alyssa's alley. She loved it, and, and I actually really enjoyed it too. Noah and I also enjoyed it a lot. I learned a lot about uh, orcas that I had never known before. And of course they had one um, segment of the exhibit was about uh, orcas featured in pop culture, movies and TV and such. And of course they had Free Willy. They had a, a, a little, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, a little exhibit uh, uh, talking about Free Willy and stuff. And uh, the uh, orcas that ha had been captured and trained for the uh, uh, marine parks like SeaWorld and, and such. So it's kind of kind of delved into the darker side of uh, of humans' fashion fascination with orcas. So, uh, you know, it's kind of, you got to take that with the whole package, I guess. But anyway, uh, before I continue rambling on too much, I guess a great place, uh, and they had several other different uh, exhibits as well, lots of interesting stuff at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, uh, another highly recommended attraction if you uh, make it up to Portland. And then, of course, uh, after having lunch at a nice little place called Cheryl's on 12th, uh, my brother and I ate there back in January when I was when we went up there. He and I went up there for a couple of days. Great lunch there. Uh, we went to uh, Powell's City of Books and Everyday Music. And Cheryl's on 12th is like a four or five block walk from Powell's, so very strategically located. 
Uh, and yes, Noah and Alyssa, as I knew they would, had a huge amount of fun browsing Powell's. Uh, they, they, they must have spent two and a half hours there, and they could easily have spent more as, uh, you know, it's a, it's a multi-story bookstore taking up an entire city block, so you can just imagine how huge it is. But yes, they had lots and lots of fun, and I was happy to, you know, when, when I was done and uh, my feet were getting exhausted, I was happy to find a bench to sit at and just let them spend as much time as they wanted. And so, yes, they had a lot of time, and that's, again, that's the reason they were there. I didn't want to uh, short, you know, shortchange their time there with having fun. So, yes, after that, we went to Everyday Music, which is like three or four blocks right down the street from Powell's. And again, Noah had a blast there as well. Uh, he spent good, a good couple hours there uh, browsing the, wa the racks with uh, Alyssa exercising, her again, her endless patience with Noah. I mean, if you're going to have patience with somebody looking at record stores, uh, it's true love as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yes, they, they are a fantastic couple. But anyway, uh, not, not, you know, not too divert to the, the mushy stuff here. But uh, yes, we didn't get back to the hotel until, uh, what was it, about 6.30, 6.45? They had so much fun there. And again, uh, you will see a video taken from the hotel room, uh, so you'll have to forgive the, the lighting and the uh, camera work there. I didn't want to bother packing my camera light for just, you know, one usage, if we were, if we were even going to have that usage. So uh, you're, you're going to have to deal with the imperfections of that video. But yes, we will have a separate Portland Hall video that you will see coming up later. Uh, and then, uh, yes, Wednesday was our second day in Portland. And uh, we started off that day at the Oregon Zoo, which is a, uh, a zoo. Lots of people call it the Portland Zoo. It's not the Portland Zoo. It's the Oregon Zoo, located basically in the heart of Portland. Uh, you take the, the MAX train, which is the, the light rail system uh, in Portland. It goes through a tunnel heading toward uh, the western suburbs. And in the middle of that tunnel is a stop that is specifically for access to the zoo. So you stop there, go up a little elevator, and you're you're right at the entrance to the zoo. So uh, very conveniently, uh, the, the, the uh, access to the zoo couldn't be easier if you're going by mass transit. So uh, lots of fun there. And I tell you, they had a lot packed into that zoo. And did I, did I mention that, again, this is a place that I had never been to? And, you know, in all my 27 years in Oregon until now. So yes, a whole bunch of fun. And as you will see in another montage I've got uh, coming up here, uh, pretty much every kind of an animal you could think of, they had...
Uh, they had an aviary, which we didn't go into. I was not hugely, uh, you know, eager to see the aviary. I like birds, but uh, only some kind of birds. I like birds of prey, mostly. And uh, and there, they also had an, exhi uh, an exhibit on insects. Noah and I didn't care, and neither did Alyssa, frankly. Uh, we're not too keen on visiting that, so we were okay with skipping those. Uh, but still, we spent three hours, a good three hours, in the zoo. It was... Uh, practically overrun by uh, groups of school kids with their chaperones, you know, kindergarten through probably third graders. And uh, they can be loud. Yes, they can be very loud. They can be a little bit, uh, I mean, I suppose, you know, they kind of uh, stir each other up, you know, kind of, I don't want to say mob mentality, but I guess that's the same psychological concept probably. And uh, it's great that you know, they were so excited about seeing the animals. You know, whenever they saw a particular animal, one of them would scream at the top of their lungs, you know, the name of that animal, you know. Oh, giraffes! You know, so anyway, uh, so so despite the noise factor and the, the crowdedness of it all, it was still fun. Uh, I, I was a little overwhelmed by it at first, but I was able to, to let go and have a huge amount of fun. A nicely laid out zoo as well. Uh, they have a big uh, open grass, grassy courtyard, kind of like a, an amphitheater, right in the middle of the zoo, and the weather was wonderful. So you could get, uh, there were, you know, little uh, snack food places all around that uh, open area. So you could get uh, uh, concessions and have a little picnic lunch there on that grass, or and all sorts of kids were out playing on the grass and stuff. So, uh, you know, it was a great day for everyone, not just for me and Noah and Alyssa, but for everyone. Uh, so yes, had a lot of fun at the zoo. And we stopped at a little place to eat that was just uh, on the outside entrance of the tunnel I just mentioned a minute ago. The very next stop back toward downtown Portland, there was a little uh, a little pub-like eatery there. The the outside of it looked a little bit sketchy, but they had they had good sandwiches and stuff. So nice little lunch. And then uh, we tried to go to the um, Oregon Jewish Museum and Center for Holocaust Education, but unfortunately it was closed for renovations. So, and that was one of the things that was on our list that. Uh, Noah and Alyssa really wanted to see, so unfortunately, darn the timing of that, didn't happen. Uh, but uh, so, um, as kind of as a consolation prize for that, um, I don't I don't know if I mentioned, but in Eugene, we stopped at a Salt and Straw, which is a, it's an ice cream parlor. Got its start in Portland, and it's it's a regional thing. I think uh, they make some kind of a artisan flavors of ice cream. Some of them are kind of questionable, but uh, had a great time uh, with the Salt and Straw in Eugene. So I decided to get us, uh, to treat us all to Salt and Straw again uh, up in Portland as kind of a, uh, as I said, a consolation for missing out on the museum, the uh, Jewish and Holocaust Museum. Uh, but after that, we went to Music Millennium, of course, had to go to Music Millennium again. Uh, well, the first time for Noah. And of course, uh, that store is my favorite because of the atmosphere. Uh, uh, Everyday Music is a little more budget friendly. But Music Millennium has the atmosphere leaps and bounds beyond everyday music. And uh, yes, again, Noah had lots of fun there. And uh, and again, you will see our Portland Hall uh, in um, a video coming up, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, covering both everyday music and Music Millennium. So yes, lots of fun to be had there. And uh, then, unfortunately, that night, um, Noah and Alyssa had to fly home out of Portland. So I had Thursday by myself. I had a day uh, on my own in Portland, and it was kind of like my, my cleanup day, uh, 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 cleanup at bat, uh, to, uh, to use a, a baseball analogy, as I'm trying to uh, stumble over my, over my words. Uh, but but uh, to start out the day, I went out to the uh, Powell's store in Beaverton. I had uh, Beaverton is a western suburb of Eugene. I hadn't been to that Powell's since I think before the pandemic. 
Uh, so it's again been a long time and uh, found some books. I will show you my book haul from Powell's in my second wrap-up video, which will be at the end of this uh, series of uh, Noah and Alyssa vacation videos, uh, as well as the CDs that I got on this cleanup day, this this uh, final day in Portland. So yes, that wraps up the uh, uh, summarizes my vacation or their vacation here. But before I go, I thought I would show you uh, one little haul. I didn't want to do this video without some kind of a haul. And this haul is um, some CDs that Noah brought me as a, kind of as a gift. I mean, I, I would kind of be shocked if Noah hadn't, uh, you know, brought some CDs along with him to give me. And yes, some of them were things that I asked for, and some of them were just, just for fun. And... Um, yeah, I had a gift, a uh, little gift bag of CDs for him. We thought about doing a video of, you know, a little gift exchange, you know, doing it live in front of the camera so we'd be surprised at what we each other got. But we didn't do that video, so uh, this is half of that video here. Uh, yes, he had a couple of uh, uh, CDs from a library sale where he got a bunch of jazz titles, and he showed me pictures of what he got and asked me if I wanted any of them. And so these first three are uh, ones that I knew he was bringing to me. Uh, this one is a two-disc set of Benny Goodman, uh, the Carnegie Hall Jazz Concert from 1938. Uh, it's a two-disc set, and so yes, I'm uh, very interested to listen to this. Uh, should be lots of fun. And then he also brought me a Miles Davis CD, Miles Davis Around About Midnight. I've been wanting to dip my toes a little bit more into Miles Davis as well. And then this one is a group that I, I must have heard of them at some point, but uh, never gave them a try. The Crusaders, they are a jazz group from the 60s, or probably before that. I, no, yeah, it looks like they're from the 60s or 70s, judging by the, the fashion choices in their in the uh, picture there. So yes, lots of really looking forward to listening. I haven't had time to listen to any of these yet. I spent yesterday uh, napping from, uh, you know, recuperating from my trip, uh, even though I got home on Friday. Uh, anyway, this one, this next one was uh, in his Discog store, and... Uh, it's funny because I had thought about um, buying it two or three times. I thought about buying it from his Discogs inventory and never did. And I didn't even ask him for it. Somehow he just knew instinctually that I might want it. It is uh, George Benson, Songs and Stories. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I, I've got several George Benson titles already. And so very much looking forward to listening to this one. So yes, features songs written by Bill Withers, Lamont Dozier, James Taylor, and more. So, yeah. have never really been disappointed in a James Taylor album, or a, um, a George Benson album. I've been, been a, I've been meh on a couple of them, but, uh, so, I, I don't know, I guess maybe that is disappointed, I don't know. Anyway, um, one, one of these, I guess I could have saved this for my, uh, <clears throat> uh, every, uh, my, uh, Epic Seconds haul, because he actually bought this for me while we were at Epic Seconds and gave it to me after the fact. Uh, Liam Gallagher, As You Were. Uh, I've never checked out... I only have one Oasis album that I, I like. Never checked out any of the Gallagher Brothers solo projects before. So uh, Noah says I uh, he thinks I will like this one a lot. So thank you very much, Noah. I said thank you in person, but I had to do that again. Uh, now this one... <laughs> this is one of the ones he just threw in just because. Uh, the Fight Songs of Oklahoma State University. They are both Oklahoma State alum. And uh, yeah, as the, the case obviously needs... a. Uh, replacement. I, I think I will replace the case. But yes, just a, a few fight songs from the uh, the Oklahoma State Marching Band. So, what the heck. Of course, I'm going to, whenever I see this CD, I'm going to think of Noah and Alyssa, obviously. And then I got a couple ones here that are still sealed. Yeah, the rest of these are just kind of stuff that he just got me um, and surprised me with. I had no idea that he was enclosing inclo these. Uh, the Tragically Hip, uh, the album We Are the Same, I've been thinking about checking out the cat, the Tragically Hip for a while now and never have, and this one is still sealed, as is the next one. Um, this is Freaked Out and Small by the Presidents of the United States of America. I've got, uh, yes, he gave me, or or did I buy from his Discogs Hall, I can't remember, uh, one of their CDs, and I picked up their second album. I liked it so much, so this is... I don't know if this is their third album or just a, a B-Sides collection. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and then another one that he thinks I will like that I've uh, never tried out before is uh, Roger Roger Waters. Yeah. 
uh, Roger Waters, is this the life we, we really want? And I guess this one is, this one came out in 2019, 2017. And I guess it's got some uh, uh, sociopolitically charged uh, lyrics in it, which uh, should be very interesting to listen to. So yes, I'm looking forward to hearing this one, as I am to all of them. And then we have a band called The Jezebels. This is a five, five track uh, EP. I am not familiar with the Jezebels, and so he just kind of threw this one in, uh, a few of these just just for the heck of it, to see if I would like them or not. And that is the case with a band called The Nadas. We listened to, to this one in the car. Uh, well, we sort of listened to it. We were talking most of the time, uh, and so I didn't get a great listen to it. It's um, It did not grab me right off the bat, so I kind of ha have a feeling this will not be a keeper in the long run, but we'll see. And then this one, I can't remember if he said he bought this one for me at one of the thrift stores while we were out, out and about, or if he brought this one to me, um, you know, from Oklahoma. This is Digital Ash in a Digital Urn by uh, the Bright Eyes. Uh, I've never checked out a Bright Eyes album before, so uh, this will be interesting. An, an interesting uh, case. Yeah, you can, uh, even out of the case, you can barely see the uh, cover art on that one. And he also put in, threw in a Weezer CD single, Hashpipe, and it's got a couple of B-sides he says were, are pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, won't turn down a Weezer CD. Uh, well, I won't turn down anything from Noah. And uh, this last one, though, is interesting because uh, it took him bringing this to me and me looking up the artist to realize that this guy uh, was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Todd Snyder. I never heard of the guy. I mean, I, I may have heard of him at some point, but have never checked out his music. So, and I am, that is something I am woefully neglectful of is uh, checking out uh, local artists or artists who are from the local area. I just, for some whatever reason, I just never do that. So uh, I will, I look forward to listening to this one. And I actually anticipated maybe liking this one that uh, you will see in one of my hauls. I picked up his sophomore album I found in the, the budget bin. So, so I've got two Todd Snyder CDs to check out and hopefully I will enjoy them. And gosh, I to told you at the beginning that I wasn't going to make these videos very long, but this video is already half an hour long. So uh, yes, that is my uh, gift haul from Noah. Thank you very, very much, Noah, for all of those CDs. I am looking forward to listening to them. Uh, hopefully I will get around to all of the truckload of uh, CDs and stuff that I brought home from our trip uh, before too, too terribly long. Uh, I, I'll see if I can make these a priority. So that'll do it for my vacation recap for May and June of 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.